Today, I'm going to be showing you how I got these two very different looks using Dehancer. So let's just get straight into it. Just really quick disclaimer, Dehancer is not paying me to make this video. They've only given me the plug in the test and review solely for the purpose of their development. So this will be me kind of reviewing the product for them and also kind of going through like a little tutorial of how I grade things personally. So the first couple of clips I'm going to go through was from a video I shot a few years ago. It was a fashion video I did for a boutique out in Massachusetts called Shop the Cute. Lindsay Tia, the CEO, her goal was to kind of get like a Super 8 retro home video kind of vibe. So I'm just going to pick a hero frame for all these clips and just kind of get something that I can work with in, in hopes, you know, just copy and paste it to everything else and only adjust like maybe the skin tones or exposure. And we'll go ahead and we'll do the node tree real quick. This is super simple. We're just going to speed run through this because I know everyone's got a different node tree. Everyone's got a tutorial how to build one. So I'm just going to show you mine. Is there an input device transform and there an output device transform or aka CST in, CST out? This will be our white balance. This one's going to be our exposure. This will be our contrast. And now this batch right here, these are going to be what I might call a pre highlight node. This will be like a sharpness one, and then this one's going to be skin. Let's go ahead and do this real quick. Uh, this was all shot in S-Log2. Already, this is kind of what we're starting with. Now, everything right here is just a way to set us up for Dehancer, which is going to go right there. If we can get everything here correct in the way we want it and a good starting point, that way when we do put Dehancer on, we're working with a clean foundation. So for the white balance, I mean, you don't have to spend too much time on this. You can see here, it's it's pretty close. So I'm just, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. It is looking a little warm, I will say. So what if we bring that down? Oh, that's too green. Super subtle change. So, I mean, I'm fine with that. I think that's gonna get us where we wanna be. Uh, the exposure, let's see. I think I'll try to save the highlights a little more and then maybe just a little bit, bring this out. Contrast, I kind of like to sit around like a one point two to 1.3 that's just my taste but i'm like i tend to create a lot of moody looks so maybe i'll keep it around 1.2 instead of pushing it and then the pivot i'll bring close to three just to really like pull more out of the shadows but like not lose anything up in the mid-tones or highlights too much okay so the pre-highlight this is where i try to buy myself some dynamic range with the sky in the back here so what i'll do is just qualify the sky here so it's sitting at like just above middle gray i want to try to bring it back closer to towards middle gray and not too much where it looks obvious so we can start to bring it back a little bit i mean it's this is 8-bit footage you're not going to be able to bring a whole lot of information back but i mean it is what it is so now the sharpness just going to here I'll sharpen it now before I use the enhancer because I don't want to sharpen it after the fact and as a result sharpen the grain. That'll just look too weird. And then I'll also sharpen the mid-tones as well, somewhere around there maybe. So then you can really see like just how much is coming back. It's really nice. So, so far we got the highlights, we've got the sharpening, and now we can do the skin. So yeah, something like that maybe. Let's just make their skin look a little richer. This might be too red. I actually think that looks good. I've got to do something up here too. I would like this to be a little more obvious that it's a sky. Yeah, I'm like that. That does wonders. Okay, so now that we've got this, now we can do our look here. So this is going to be Dehancer. After that, we're going to have our look so that we can actually manipulate the colors the way we want them to look. This is going to be what I call a post highlight. This is just more of a stylistic um, choice of mine that I like in a lot of film emulation stuff. And then this one will be our blacks. Another personal thing I like to do is like lift the blacks up just a little bit to kind of give them that flat filmic look so they're not completely crushed. And yeah, so that's our that's our node tree here essentially. So let's go ahead and check out the answer here for a sec. We're in a DaVinci wide gamut, so we'll start there and then we'll start to go through all the details that we want out of this look. Oh, I'm able to defringe. Um, so the film, what's really interesting is they have not only different film stocks like Kodak Vision, you know, like that most of Hollywood is used. They also have stuff like Portra 400, which is a photo stock. So it's very interesting the fact that you can make your videos 
look specifically like a photo rather than an, a, a film stock. And as you can see, there are dozens dozens of different film stocks so it's very nuanced if you know your fuji color film stocks you can use that if you love and adore kodak you've got a lot of those so i'm a big fan of kodak ektachrome i think that looks really nice there's also the kodachrome which is nice too that looks very super eight but obviously for the most part vision 3 is like a staple for kodak and that's kind of where we would start. I kind of like the Ektachrome. It really like has good color separation just from the get-go. So I'm going to stick with that. Our color separation is all the way up, which is good. You can play with the contrast here based off of this film stock and how it behaves. I'll boost the colors here a little bit just to kind of give me something to work with later down the line. Better to kind of push it now and then draw back later. Film compression, I'll throw that on because it kind of helps again with like those highlights up here and it also creates a better roll off color density i'm a huge fan of that that's going all the way up to 100 to <laughs> expand we don't really need to worry about that right now so the print this is where your basic look pivots and becomes that crazy filmic look you can leave the print as is you can set it up to be cine on film log the 3513 from fujifilm the kodak 2383 everyone loves this for good reason so this is really funny i didn't i didn't know about this until i was reading the manual from dehancer i don't know why i didn't think about it like this way before but you don't film stuff on kodak 2383 it's printed on that so I, th I thought that was really interesting. I had no idea. I straight up thought you just, you filmed on <laughs> Kodak 2383. Throw that on, see what it's doing. So from there you have all of these tools you would have in an analog form of optical printing right here, which is really neat. If you want to reset the white balance, you can do that. In this case, it does look a little warm. So I'll make it a little bit more cool. The exposure doesn't really change too, too much. I think that's fine. Color density, we'll sit it somewhere around there maybe. I don't want to go too crazy. It might start to mess with other things. But I do like the fact that Lindsay, who has this beautiful ginger hair, pops more with everybody else's skin as well. But I don't want to do it too much. I think that's fine. I'm going to leave that as is. I kind of like the, the contrast I'm at right now. I just turn the grain off real quick before we get into that, uh, just to see everything a little bit better and what's happening. So in the color head, again, these are basically based on the analog color correction tools they used back in the day, like printer lights. Uh, so you can really adjust the tone of everything that you want here. Let's turn that on and see what it's doing. And again, my advice is to really like throw it around and see what it's doing and see where you would like it to be. So I kind of feel like this is kind of yellow so i'll just move it over literally just a little bit because here i just want it to be in a good balanced place here is where i will adjust the hues and again it's really just about subtle movements i think perfection is just a lot of little things done really well you just got to be really subtle with things sometimes especially when you're coloring 8-bit footage you can only push it so much damn it <laughs> so just like like that like it's it's so so subtle but you can see how much the greens come back and how rich they're looking so yeah like super nice okay now all of the stuff you're used to using pngs and you know overlays for it's super 8 so let's stick with that level of grain sitting around you know there is fine again it's you know if you were out in broad daylight you'd have an iso 50 cartridge for this you wouldn't have 500 because you know make it make sense in the halation um sometimes you don't have to do like a bunch of crazy halation like that just looks a little odd i know that's the no remjet option but some people like that some people don't i don't really think there needs to be a ton of halation here because what it's doing is instead of getting the highlights it's just muddying up a lot of what looks cool and white but obviously up here on the edges in the tree line you'd want a little bit of halation so i'm just gonna park it right here yeah you can see if you look at the tree line you'll really see it up there and that's where i think it matters bloom like who who doesn't love bloom right here we go super eight i think that looks nice maybe like right there the whole point of it is yeah i don't want a lot of bloom but i want this certain quality of the super eight bloom you know it's not like bloom on imax you know if, even if i kick that up to 100 it's it has a very distinct look so we'll just 
go here. Film damage, why not? I don't want this completely broken, busted up footage, so maybe just a little bit. Film breath is a nice little subtle thing. It kind of like, it'll give you that bounce and exposures of like, you know, flashing frames that were overexposed. Gate weave, I don't want to use. I don't want it to like, you know, make it look like it's off track or anything. Okay, the overscan, such a nice feature they threw in here. So for something like this, you would absolutely use this right? There's your Super 8. That's how you would use it. Now, if you were doing something like an IMAX perforation, I don't know when and why you would want to show it this way, but it's there if you want to use it for something like Super 8 or maybe even 16 millimeter, depending. Uh, this is an absolute must. And it's nice. You can, you know, you don't have to go into the edit tab down here to like adjust this. You can really like slide the frame around here if you need to. You can choose like the size of it you want for how much of the frame you want in there. I want to have a little more on the top and bottom rather than, you know, cutting off that much. So I'm just going to park it at here just a little bit. That is it at its fullest effect, but if you want to bring it back a little more, you totally can. I want to see this in its full effect, so I'm just going to leave that alone. So now let's get into the look. First things first, these greens, they need to be addressed. These can look a lot richer, and that's just a me thing. I really don't like when the greens are yellow. Some people could argue that just is what makes it feel more summery, which I get, but I like my greens to look lush and rich. So I'm gonna bring that down. I'll bring the luminance down to really create that extra depth and then desaturate it a little bit. So you see what I mean? Like that, in my opinion, just looks a lot nicer. I'll be honest, I didn't like how teal the sky looked up here, so I think we'll just make this a little more blue. And then the shadows, like especially around her dress and the wood, it kind of feels a little purpley, like it's pushing up around here. But yeah, if you like look at her dress now, you can tell it's like more purpley, and then now it's a little bit more blue. So this is kind of like the whole trick I've been kind of into recently with this film emulation stuff. So anything that is in the highlights is kind of a little teal. So it's again, it's the hat, the sky, and a little bit of the clothes, and then I'll just take that and drag it down a little bit here. So yeah, you can see it like in their hats, especially. I don't know what this is, but when I've seen it in other film emulation, it's very common, and I'm not sure if that's just like a taste preference thing that people are doing, or if that is the way some film behaves in certain settings. So I'm just going to stick with that because I like it. And the blacks, this is where I was talking about, you know, lifting the blacks up to around here, around like 80 IRE. Because obviously if you go too far, you can see like what it's doing. And this actually doesn't look terrible. Some people do not like this at all. I don't mind it. Um, it can be tasteful. And that's what this is here. So like maybe right there, that might be too much. That's not terrible, no, but you can like see it right here in her hair, especially, you know, it's like, it doesn't look as deep. It looks two dimensional almost. Here's where this can be a real drawback though with these blacks right here is this is an accounting for this. Um, and it's the, again, I don't think it's too, too terrible, but let's see if we can fix that a little bit. That's a little too much. <laughs> yeah, I think somewhere around there is kind of cool. Here's the before. And that's the after. Pretty freaking cool. So like I said, I wanted to create something that could simply just be copied and pasted to these other clips. And I mean, come on. Look at this. It's just so fun to watch. And the fact that this was shot on S-Log2 in 8-bit color, it just, I mean... And then this one... I mean, my goodness, it just, I mean, I think the only thing I would really change here is like the skin tones. I can tell it's a little bit orange, but just copying and pasting, like we're already like 98% of the way there. You don't have to do too much, you know? I mean, my God, look at that. I love all of these extra film traits they give you, you know, like the overscan, the film breath, it's all super nice to just have it right here. My only complaint, I guess, with Dehancer is the fact that it's all sliders. Like, this gets old after a while. The whole point of using something like this on DaVinci 
is to have something more intuitive like all of these tools and to have a color board. I obviously don't have a color board yet, but I think for even seasoned professionals, you know, if they're using something like Dehancer, it should feel more intuitive and by feel sort of right here for the car. That looks really cool. They look a little, it looks a little hot. Um, that wouldn't be my final choice. I don't think let's see. Hang on. Yeah, it looks a little bit better. There looks a little too pops a little too much, or maybe it's correct. And it's just the density here. Hang on. Yeah, it could be a little bit of that. I mean, that looks so cool. Yeah, so I'm just going to speed run through this one really quick. I've already got the node tree built out, but for this one, I'm going to have like a more IMAX look, I guess. So for this one, again, very similar node tree build out. Uh, we did the white balance. I adjusted the exposure, set my contrast. We did that thing to the highlights I was talking about. We did my sharpening, which I didn't do too much of because this is shot on a Siri anamorphic and these are tack sharp, so I don't need to do much to that. And then we'll qualify our skin tones. And so for this one, I'm gonna go for like an IMAX kind of look. So again, the Ektachrome, I'm a big fan of it. It just looks nice overall. Everything else is pretty much the same. I'm gonna go ahead and see what looks better here. The Fuji, ooh, or the Kodak. Oh man. I do kind of like the coolness of this one. Let's see. The color dense. Whoa, man, that looks great up there. Those reds that like really get rich. We can make it just a little bit cooler, I guess. Contrast just a little bit. Color head. Let's see what's happening here. Bring a little bit warmth in the areas that matter back, but maintain that coolness. I think that looks good. I'm liking what's happening to the walls here. They're becoming a nice 50s green, mid-century almost. Not this weird key lime pie green that we had before. So that looks nice so far. What would happen if I rotate this just a little bit? This vector scope, I mean, like it's, cause right now it's really skinning across that yellow and blue. But what if I want to get a little more of a deeper blue? Let's go back here. So it's IMAX, you know, 65 millimeter. We're going to have grain that looks like that. If it were indoors, it would be at 250. 500, it's kind of pushing in, I think, a little bit. Maybe. So 250 is nice. The halation, let's see what's happening here. Yeah, you can really see it on the edges of the, the, the edges of the crown around the lampshade. And the bloom, again, same qualities as if it were shot on IMAX. I'll bring this down just a little bit though. And now because this is a technically a bigger, more expensive film stock, I don't want to include things like film damage, breath, gate weave, or an overscan because this is meant to look like, you know, it's being projected on screen for IMAX viewing. So I'm not gonna add any of these to that. The vignette I'm not going to use because since, like I said, this was shot on anamorphic, there's already, like you can see right here, there's a natural vignette to the nature of the lens. Go ahead and do a look real quick. I think I'm also going to add a gradient here just to get rid of like the area in the sheets here. Yeah, that takes care of that. Again, I really like what's happening in, on this wall. Let's see if I can isolate that. Let's just see what happens if we push this. Okay, yeah, I do. I do like that. I do like that. Let's go ahead and do these highlights really quick and see how everything's really starting to look. I wonder if I can do just the sheet area and not those. There we go. Yeah, we just focus on that. That's pretty subtle. And then the blacks like before, we'll just lift that up here. You can see what's happening there. Yeah, I like this. And then, I mean, like we can drag the whole thing into a look. We can look like the Matrix or... So I think sitting it around there is kind of nice. Just very slowly. So yeah, that's kind of an IMAX look. And then if we wanted, we could do the Oppenheimer look where we've got nothing but black and white. <laughs> so there's our before. That's our after. And then from log, boom. Crazy difference. Wow. Usually like through color grading, like you don't realize how much of a difference you're making until you're at the end of the line here because there's so many steps along the way. But I like that a lot of the steps that need to happen can all happen right here. If it wasn't for this, there would probably be, you know, like eight more nodes for you to tack on. And this is pretty 
daunting of a no tree. So yeah, those are my two very different looks using Dehancer. If you liked both of these looks and you'd like them as a LUT, I'll put a link for them for free in my Discord. I'll link that down below. If you want something that's a little more intuitive, like a power grade, uh, comment below and let me know. And then maybe I can get a power grade going. But yeah, that's pretty much it for me. If you liked this kind of review for color grading or even like a tutorial, so to speak, uh, comment below and let me know if you think I should make more of these. Thank you to Dehancer for sending me your plugin. If you were kind of on the fence about buying it, but now you're kind of convinced you want to get it, I have a code that you can use to get 10% off. So yeah, if you're ready to commit and you're ready to buy this, you can totally use my code. I would love to see how Dehancer stacks up against DaVinci's own film emulation plugin, but I do think just purely judging at face value what Dehancer is capable of and how long they've had skin in the game in developing their software, I think it's going to be an interesting comparison. So yeah, that's pretty much it for me. Uh, again, you know, links to these LUTs are down below. If you want to go ahead and buy this, you can use my code here. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching.